I have good news for you today. The good news today comes from the message to the church of Pergamos. It's found in Revelation chapter 2, and we are in a series on the seven churches of Revelation. Revelation is the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's not the revelation of St. John the Divine, as some Bibles say. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. You can see today's church, the one that is uh, called Pergamos. It's the northernmost city of the seven. And on the map, you can see that it's uh, the third church on this mail route from ancient uh, Asia Minor. Some of your Bibles may have Pergamum instead of Pergamos. It's the same thing. Pergamos is the feminine form, and Pergamum is the neuter form, but it's the same. The Bible says that Pergamos is where Satan dwells. What does that mean? Well, we're going to find out today. Background for Pergamos. It was founded about the 12th century B.C., Uh, It was a natural fortress, the capital for 250 years, and they they, they called the the top of the hill the Acropolis, where where the the fortress was at the the very pinnacle of uh, of a mountain. And uh, they had lots of temples there. There was a temple to Augustus, to Trajan, to Severus, and they had lots of... uh, of deities there. There was Zeus, Athena, Dionysus, Asclepius, and others. It was a city of royalty, authority, and beauty. There was a huge library there. They invented parchment, and there's more about that in a few minutes. And it was famous for its hospital and its medical school. All right, we're going to look at all of those things. You feel free to take notes if you like, but you can also go online and and look at this whole presentation again if you really want to get into this and study it. Uh, Here, I happened to, when I was there in Pergamos, I happened to find these two beautiful women, and I just had to take a picture of them. Of course, you know, one of them is my wife, Barbara, and the other one was a shopkeeper, and we, we bought some things from the shopkeeper, and the shopkeeper was just outside of uh, the city uh, that we were going to go visit. So the bus drove up, we parked in the parking lot, and walking up to uh, the, the Acropolis, they had all these little shops, and these were all hand-painted uh, items, and it, it, was, it was just something to behold. Here's the city wall at Pergamos. This is on, again, the top of a mountain, and you can see actually from this slide that there are are three different types of blocks uh, that that make up this wall. That is because the city was destroyed and rebuilt and uh, destroyed and rebuilt again. So there are three different types of blocks uh, or construction. Uh, you see on, on the right side at the top, that's one, and then right below that is another, and then over on the left side is still another construction. Guess which one is the oldest? It's the one on the left. That is the oldest, and they use no mortar. The blocks were perfectly cut and put in place amazing construction Uh, the other constructions uh, used mortar uh, because they weren't quite as efficient in making the blocks Uh, this is a site at the top of the hill and this gentleman I took a picture of is actually exiting the Acropolis or he's exiting the fortress at the top of the hill there's the gate so he's he's going away from the Acropolis Uh, He's not coming in, but he's going away, and I took the picture so you could see in the background that there is a a city down below. It's a a fairly major city. It's called Bergama today, and this is the gate to the Acropolis. Once you enter the gate, you can see immediately uh, the stone arch that was at Pergamos. This was... uh, 
uh, torn down and then uh, reconstructed, but it's just a piece of architecture. But you can see the beautiful view you have from the top of the mountain. This is a site of one of the temples. This is the Temple of Athena. And again, notice the mountains in the background. This is one of their cisterns, how they got uh, the water and stored it. And then this is the Temple of uh, Trajan. He was, of course, a Roman emperor, and it, it, he was one of the uh, living emperors, and uh, this was built in his honor. This is another picture of it, and still another picture. And you can see right above where I've written on the slide temple, you can see right above that that there are some arches right above the word temple. Here's a little better picture of it. And these are arches that are actually supporting the temple. This type of arch is actually uh, something that, that lends strength uh, to the architecture. So this is stronger than uh, if it had just been built on the, on the dirt. And if you go down low, uh, in like the basement, you can actually see the arches, and uh, they were in between the arches, there were places where shops existed, and people would uh, sell different things that they had made. Beautiful construction. Here is the site of the library at Pergamos. You can see that there's not much left of this library. But this library is very, very important. It had uh, 200,000 volumes and was second only to the library at uh, Alexandria in Egypt. So it was the second largest library uh, in the world. And what happened is that there was a rivalry between the two libraries as who had the larger library. And so what, what came about was that the library at uh, Pergamos was getting larger and was about to take over the number one spot. And the library in Alexandria was a little upset about this. And so they pulled a few connections and they stopped all shipments of papyrus to Pergamos. So they couldn't have the papyrus to, to, to write on, and they couldn't make more volumes. So what happened? Well, the, the folks in Pergamos invented something that we today call parchment. It, they were starting to write on the skins of animals, and they stretched it out, and they dried it out, and they wrote on it. So this was a way for them to... Uh, to get more volumes in their library. Then uh, you all know the story of uh, Antony and uh, uh, Cleopatra. And these libraries were in constant uh, rival mode until finally uh, Antony was infatuated with Cleopatra and he had the power to give the Pergamos Library to the queen of Egypt, Cleopatra, and that he did, and that ended the rivalry between those two cities. So there's no extra charge for that. We just kind of threw that in today. We're not going to take up another offering. <laughs> this is a stadium at the Pergamos. Again, you can see down below the city. And uh, here is the altar of Zeus. This is the site of the altar of Zeus. And right now, there are just a couple of trees there. But previously, there was an altar there. You can see the foundation is still there. The altar of Zeus, of Zeus was uh, dedicated to Asclepius, the son of Apollo. And Asclepius was a, a, a god that they worshipped, and this god was the god of serpents. And they kept serpents in this facility. 